Hello, this is Pastor Dave, and we are now in the third week of Advent, and we continue on with our Advent meditation based upon the book Making Room, Sharing the Love of Christmas by Ed Robb. I'm going to begin with a verse that is kind of a theme for consideration of this session, which he has titled, Leave the Light On. It's from Isaiah 61 through 2. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Here ends the reading from Isaiah. There was a tagline he tells us in his writing for Motel 6 that went like this, we'll leave the light on for you. And he says it always made him think about what Christ followers are to do, to let our shine, light shine in, other, in an otherwise dark world. Leaving a light on for travelers at night helps them know when they've arrived. It offers a warm glow that welcomes them in for food and rest. Perhaps when you have been heading, but you've been heading home on a dark night, you have been comforted to see a light in the window. And of course, we can all, I think, identify with that. Um, I sometimes do get home in the dark, and it is reassuring to see the front lights on in front of our house so that I can see to get in, but also to know there's someone there waiting to welcome me darkness in the world. And today it seems that the world does seem quite dark in many ways. Darkness in the scriptures has this meaning of, of chaos, of ignorance, uh, and of simply not knowing what is true. In the ancient world, they were reliant on things like Fires, campfires, if they were outdoors for light, or torches, if they were in the streets, or in their homes, they had developed these small lamps that were that burned oil. And it didn't put out a great deal of light, but when things are quite dim, uh, any light seems quite bright, uh, at least sufficient, uh, sufficiently so that one could find their way around their home, even in the dark. And what he wants us to think about is, is that as Christian people, we ought to be leaving the light on in our lives and how we uh, live and act in our dominion so that people might know that they're welcome to approach us. They're welcome to uh, hear from us the story of the gospel of Jesus Christ that we're not going to tell it in a way that is judgmental but is essentially in a way that helps them to understand just who this Lord is, this Lord of light, uh, whose birth was heralded by a star in the sky, a bright star that guided the Magi on their way, on their journey, and showed them the way to go to the place of the, where the child was born or was growing up at that time, maybe two years old, they think, possibly, but where they would find this child that they sought that the heavens had announced in this marvelous way. We are asked for this particular week to read John chapter 1, verses 1 through 13, and I'll read that to you now from the RSV version, of the NRSV version of the Bible. It is the very beginning of the Gospel of John, and this is how it reads. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. What had, has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from, John, from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. 
He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own. And his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born, not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. Here we see John's testimony concerning Jesus as being the light of the world. During the third week of Advent, we light the candle that we call joy. Joy is a state of mind for some people. In other words, they feel joyful and they think that means the same as happiness, but not to me. I have a different understanding of joy. I think it's a state of being. It's what God gives us. It's what comes inside us and literally fills us to overflowing if we allow it to. And it's not something that is as fleeting as is a state of mind. A state of mind is something that is dependent on external forces, things that can happen on the outside. We can be happy one minute and very unhappy the next. All it takes is a piece of bad news, a telephone call, a bad report from the doctor, or some painful aspect of loss in life, and our happiness is gone. Joy, on the other hand, I think of as being different in that it is a state of being. It is uh, who we are. It defines us. And so we are joy-filled with this peace and love and grace of God, and we are joy-filled with the certainty of God's love for us. And that's joy that stays with us, that will carry us through difficult days even when we're not very happy. Indeed, if we are quite sad, we can still find the joy in the knowledge that Jesus Christ is in the world, just as John did. That Jesus Christ is present in our lives through the power of the Holy Spirit and through our faith. This third Sunday of Advent is a reminder to us that no matter how bad things get or where we find ourselves in this day and age of dealing with pandemic and for all too many loss of jobs, uh, many companies suffering, uh, nonprofits doing poorly. It's a, it's a difficult time for a lot of people going into this Christmas season. But we've seen difficult times before. We've encountered these things in the past, nothing quite like this pandemic. But as a nation, we've confronted very difficult times and over our history. And many of us have endured difficult times in our lives. And it's often not till we come out of them that we recognize the presence of God in the midst of our difficulties. Let's take some time during this third week of Advent to pause, to consider the presence of God in our lives, to think in terms of the joy it brings to us, to know that we are the beloved of God, so much so as we have heard the scriptures quoted many times to say, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that we might live, we might find life, enlightenment, knowledge. And in that knowledge, in that truth, as Jesus said, we will surely find freedom. So continue praying for the end of this pandemic, praying for those who are suffering through it, either in health issues or through the grief of losing someone to this dreaded disease or the other many difficulties that it's causing us in our lives. And recognize that there is a great deal of pain in our nation right now and throughout the world, really. But we have the gift of God, that joy that can stay within us and keep us uh, feeling that we're on the right track or we're going the right way because we will come out of this. And perhaps when we come out of it, we look back on it, we'll have stories to tell about how when it seemed most darkest, most difficult, that the light of Christ shined in our lives 
and perhaps it shined through us for another so that they too might find their way their way home so let's leave the light on for them shall we I'll close now with prayer that uh, that Reverend Rob has written for us let us pray Creator God, who with a word brought light into the world, send the Holy Spirit as a light to us today. We praise you and humbly offer you gratitude for these celebrations that shine in our lives that we give thought to now. We pray for those who grieve. We pray for those who suffer. We pray for those who search for love and a place to call home. We pray for our leaders and that you would give them the light of wisdom. For the light you send to the world that overcomes all darkness, for that light we thank you and praise you. We thank you that we can carry that light to others. Let us pass your light to others so that it will bring food to the hungry, health to the sick, love to the fearful, and safety for the oppressed in the name of Jesus, whose life is light for all people. Amen. Till next time, may God bless you. Goodbye.